There was a discussion the other day on uh, one of the metalworking forums that I frequent, metalworkingfun.com, on uh, buying springs for, for projects. And I jumped in the conversation and suggested that instead of buying the springs, since you're making the project yourself, why not just make the springs? Well, I sort of said that jokingly, but that generated a bit of interest. Apparently there are people out there would like to see how springs were are made, so then I again half jokingly jokingly suggested that maybe I should do a video on winding springs on the lathe. Well, I guess we're gonna wind springs on the lathe today because I got a, a lot of response to that. So what I'm going to do is just go through a step-by-step -step process on how to wind a spring on the metal lathe. First thing I'd like to talk about is safety. Um, we're going to be working with uh, spring steel wire. It has a lot of energy stored up in it and sometimes that energy can get released when you least expect it and it can poke holes in your fingers or poke holes in your eyes. So the first thing we need to do when we work with spring steel wire is put on a pair of safety glasses. Um, I actually worked with a guy one time who lost an eye working with uh, stainless steel safety wire. It's so, you know, the, the risk is real. So whenever you work with wire, even if you're just uncoiling it, let alone winding a spring with it, put on a pair of safety glasses. The uh, second safety concern I'd like to discuss is don't work with the whole coil of spring, spring wire. I mean, we're work, we have rotating machinery here, and we have fingers, and we have wire. It um, doesn't take a vivid imagination to figure out what happens when all those get together. So cut off a piece of wire about the length you think you might need to wind your spring and work with that. Don't work with the whole coil. Okay, that pretty much covers it for the safety. Let's talk about tools. What kind of tools do you need to wind a spring? First thing you need is a mandrel to wind the spring on. Okay, well, in this case, all this is a piece of cold rolled steel, round. Got a center drill on one end to support it. Got a cross hole drill near the other end that I can put the wire through to help it start, start winding. And these mandrels, you, you have to select the size of the mandrel based on what size of the spring you need. The mandrel, you have to find a mandrel that's going to be a little bit smaller than the ID of the spring. Because when you wind a spring on the mandrel, it won't wind tight, it'll wind a little bit large. Basically it's a trial and error thing. You take a, take a guess at the, the size of the mandrel you need, wind a spring on it, and uh, if it's good to go, you're, you're fine. If, if it needs to be a little bigger or a little smaller, come up with another mandrel. I have a bunch of these different sized mandrels that I have on hand to suit whatever spring I need. Another thing you need, a real important tool, a matter of fact, the most important tool is a, uh, a wire guide. Okay, all this is is a piece of, this one in particular is a half inch piece of cold rolled steel. And I've drilled a 3 16 hole, pretty much the full length of it down to within about a quarter inch of the end. Went back with an end mill and cut away some of the bar down to about the side of the hole. And then I went in it with a uh, 60 degree cutter, something like this, matter of fact exactly like this. Cut a V in it to kind of act as a wire guide for a different size wire. This, this particular guide here will work from the finest wire you want up to about, about an eighth inch. I would, I would estimate you could, you could wind eighth inch wire with this. I haven't done anything that big. I've wound 80 thousandths wire and that's a handful. Um, wire that stiff doesn't want to wind around a little tiny mandrel. It takes a lot of, a lot of force to do it. But uh, this will do it if you, if you want to go that big. I don't know why you'd need a spring that stiff, but if you did, this would do it for you. Uh, another thing you need when <clears throat> working with springs is a good pair of side cutters, sharp. You're cutting hard wires, so these things, they'll do a good job if they're sharp, if they're something in your toolbox that's been kicking around for a number of years and they're all dull, forget it, go buy a new pair. Okay? And another thing is a pair of duckbill pliers like this for forming the loops on the end of the springs. These are real handy. I'll show you how to do that later. That about covers the tools. Now for the for the steps, the next thing we need to do is calculate the uh, the lead 
to set the uh, the quick change quick change gearbox to on the lathe. We want to we want to feed this wire um, at the same rate that it wants to wind up on the mandrel. So we have to know what diameter the wire is, and we can use that diameter to calculate the lead to set our lathe at. In this case, this wire is 25 thousandths in diameter. So we just take one and divide by 25 thousandths. That'll give us our lead, or that'll give us our number of threads per inch. Excuse me. In this case, 25 thousandths wire works out to 40 threads per inch. So set your quick change gearbox to 40, and you should be good to go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mount the mandrel in the way. You can use a chuck like this, or you can use a collet, whatever you like. Just leave about a uh, half inch or so out past the, uh, the cross-drilled hole so you have some, work, some room to work. And set your RPM on the lathe. You want it to be as slow as the lathe will go. In this case, it works out to about 125 RPM. You don't want the thing cranked up to, to high RPM because you're working, again, you're working with wire. And you don't want things to get out of hand, so set it set it as slow as it'll go. All right, and support the other end with the tailstock. Just so you don't, like I said, this wire, not this wire, but somewhere the bigger stuff can put a lot of take a lot of force to form. So if you don't have the end supported on the mandrel, you'll bend it. It won't it won't wind up. It'll it'll bend the mandrel and break it off. Don't ask how I know that. <coughs> All right, let's mount the guide. Okay, let's mount it in your your tool post, V side up, so you can see what's going on. Stick it out an inch or so, and get it good and tight. We don't want anything moving when we're in the middle of winding a spring. So tighten everything down good. Kind of center it vertically so the, the bottom of the V, or actually works out to about the center of the wire is about on the center of the mandrel. It's not critical. Let's get it somewhere somewhere near that. <clears throat> okay, now we have to set our half nut, get everything lined up. We want to get the center of the uh, wire guide up lined up with the cross drilled hole. So let's engage the half nut. Start up here close to the chuck. Engage the half nut. Make sure we're feeding in the right direction. And then just let it feed till it gets lined up with the cross hole. Something like that. Then we can go ahead and load our wire. Basically just put it through the uh, cross drill hole in the mandrel. Slide it on through your wire guide. And put a bend in the end of the wire to keep it from pulling through. Something like that. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit now so you can see what happens here when we start winding. All right, so we have the RPM set on low. We have the feed set so it, so the wire guide feeds away from the chuck. We have our mandrel in place, our wire guide in place, and the wire loaded. All we need to do is hit the go button and see what happens. Uh, I'm holding on to the end of this wire with a pair of pliers just to sort of keep it out of the way. Just to make sure it doesn't get tangled up with anything. Other than that, I think we're good to go. Just going to let it feed into the wire guide. And when it gets close to the end, I'll let it go and it'll feed on through and it should finish up the spring. That's it. Let's zoom back out and see what we've done. Sometimes if you're lucky it'll pop out of the cross hole. If not, just clip it with a pair of your pair of side cutters. And we got a spring. Okay. Now we can just go and clean up the ends a little bit. Alright, now this is a this is an extension spring. 
Okay, so to use it, we need to form some loops on the end. That's where the duckbill pliers come into effect. You can just grab onto the grab onto a full loop on the end, kind of slide the pliers in there, and form a, form a couple loops on it. Something like that. Okay, we got a spring. Better than anything you can better than anything you can buy in the hardware store. So you can make it whatever length you need, whatever diameter you need, whatever strength you need. Custom, custom made. Okay? But what if we want a compression spring? Well, that's pretty easy. Grab onto these nice loops you just made with your with your pliers. Stretch it out. Clip the loops off. All right, now we got a nice compression spring. That's pretty much it. It's pretty easy as long as you follow the basic rules, basic safety rules especially. And like I say, you have to make a couple special tools. But those tools will make many different sized springs, so they're, they're pretty versatile. Um, there is a website that has a lot of information on springs. I forget the name of it offhand, but I'll, I'll stick it in the comments section of this video. That's about it.